Hello, my name is Jim, and I'm the founder of Provi Development, where we've been building award-winning database software for over three decades. Now we've taken all that experience to create an all-new program that starts with our unique RAM-based database technology, updates it to 64-bit, and combines it with the latest modern user interface concepts. Introducing Panorama 10. In this video, I'll show you how Panorama 10 allows you to collect, organize, understand, and act on your data in ways you never thought possible. To illustrate the power of Panorama, I'll be using four typical databases, ranging from simple to complex. There's a mailing list and a checkbook, a database of all airports in the United States, and a database of every aircraft registered in the U.S., over 300,000. Altogether, these databases contain over a third of a million records and over 15 million individual data items. That's a lot of data, but because of Panorama's efficient storage, it uses up less than 1% of the RAM in my laptop. Remember, this data includes every single airplane and airport in the entire United States. There's simply no reason to not take advantage of the huge speed benefits of RAM-based technology for almost any size of database task. Let's start with a quick tour. Panorama's basic interface is called the datasheet. The datasheet contains rows and columns like a spreadsheet, but has special functions optimized for working with structured database information. I'll go into more detail about that in a moment. In addition to the datasheet, which you get for free with every new database, Panorama also includes a complete application builder that allows you to build almost any custom interface you want. You have complete control over the layout and, if necessary, any programming you need. The application builder is a lot like a completely modernized version of HyperCard. I've created this layout for the airport database with a custom search panel and a custom layout for displaying and editing the data, even displaying map information. I can easily switch into the application builder mode to modify the layout. There are over two dozen user interface widgets available, including buttons, pop-up menus, style text, sliders, web browsers, even the entire Font Awesome icon library is included with over 600 built-in icons. If you've ever used Apple's powerful Xcode interface builder, you'll be instantly familiar with how the Panorama application builder works. To add a new graphics object, simply drag it onto the layout, then use the inspector panels to configure it, including adding code. You can easily flip back and forth between building and using the layout you're creating, making it very easy to try out and debug as you go. We like our application builder so much that we even used it to create all of the dialog panels in Panorama 10 itself. Panorama's application builder is great if you need it, but there's a huge amount of raw power available right in the Panorama datasheet. Let's start with searching. Panorama excels at quickly locating just the information you need. Any database program can do a fast search for a fixed value, for example, searching for all airports in Los Angeles County. But because of Panorama's RAM-based speed, it can actually show you a preview of the search as you type each key. You can easily combine multiple criteria to narrow the focus of a search. There are a lot of airports in Los Angeles County, but only a handful that are public and have more than 100 commercial flights per year. Press the Select button to display only this subset in the datasheet. You can then perform further operations on the subset, like printing or bulk modification, which I'll show you in a moment. If there is a particular value you are interested in, you can quickly right-click on it to see related data. For example, I can quickly find all airports in the city of Long Beach. Or I can right-click on a date and quickly find all airports that were opened on the same day, month, quarter, or year. If you want to perform a particular search over and over again, you can save it as a favorite. Then it can be accessed directly from the toolbar. For example, I've saved a search to find all airports over 5,000 feet. Panorama really shines for non-traditional searches like phonetic matches, regular expressions, or comparing one field to another. Panorama can perform these non-traditional searches at the same high speed as ordinary fixed value searches. For example, most airports have more small engine piston planes rather than jets, 
but what if I'd like to find all airports that have mostly jets? I've set up a favorite search for this unusual combination. I'll open the search dialog to show you how this search works. As you can see, it performs the search by using a formula to compare the number of jet aircraft with the sum of all single and multi-engine piston aircraft. You can perform a search based on any formula you want, using any of Panorama's hundreds of operators and functions. Panorama can quickly sort your data by any field or combination of fields. For example, I can sort all the airports by name, or by elevation from highest to lowest. To sort multiple fields, for example city and state, use this simple dialog. You can also set up favorite sort configurations for instant recall. As you will see in a moment, Panorama's data manipulation tools are sharp and powerful, which could make them dangerous. So let me tell you about one of the best features of Panorama 10, multi-level undo. To demonstrate this, I'll start by deleting a couple of airports from this database. Whoops! I didn't really mean to do that. I want those airports back. No problem. Now I'll delete a lot of records. In fact, I'll delete all of the airports outside of the Kenai Peninsula in Alaska. Oh no, I want all of those airports back. What if I delete some fields? Yep, it's no problem to get those fields back, including all of the data in the fields. Of course, undo also works in the graphic editor, in the code editor, and everywhere else. You can feel free to work quickly with no worries about making mistakes, because Panorama 10 always keeps a safety net there for you. In addition to the very powerful undo feature, you also have the option at any time to revert to the last save version, or to browse all save versions of the database using a time machine style interface. This airport data was originally downloaded from a Federal Aviation Administration website, and there are some quirks in the data I would like to clean up. Fortunately, because Panorama is RAM based, changing even tens of thousands of data items is super easy and fast. For example, in the airport names, the word international has been abbreviated as I-N-T-L. To expand that abbreviation, I simply open the Find and Replace dialog. I'm going to replace entire words only, but there are several other choices, including using a regular expression. If the change doesn't work quite the way you expected, you can always undo it, just like any other panorama operation. Now let's look at the wind indicator field. For some reason, the FAA data contains a bunch of extra commas. I'll clean this up with the morph field dialog. There are several methods I could use to remove the extra commas, but I'm gonna choose the keep before option keep only the text before the first comma. Boom! The commas are gone. As a final example, the airport manager phone number field isn't formatted consistently. Once again, the more field dialog is the answer. This dialog doesn't have an option for formatting phone numbers, but I can modify the text with a regular expression or a formula. Since Panorama has a built-in function for formatting phone numbers, that is the easiest solution. Do you already have data in a spreadsheet or in another database program? It's easy to transfer that data to Panorama using a text file in comma-separated, tab-separated, or JSON format. I've got a comma-separated CSV file that I'll use to demonstrate. This file contains membership information from a hypothetical national organization. I simply select the text file, then Panorama instantly loads the data and automatically sets up the database structure. It's that easy. If you look closely, you'll see that the CSV file I just imported has a common problem. Columns in the datasheet don't all line up with each other. The problem is that some records have sweet numbers, some don't, and the data after the sweet number is out of whack. If you were using any other program, 
it would require tedious line-by-line -line adjustments to fix a problem like this. But Panorama can take care of it in three quick steps. First, I select only the records without suite numbers. This is easy to do because they all have a blank in the last column. Now when I use the Shift Data Right command, only the selected data is shifted right. The final step is to select all, and now you can see that all of the columns are properly lined up. Thanks again to Panorama's unique RAM-based speed, it only took a few seconds to fix this potentially major problem. Panorama lets you split or merge fields at any time, even when a database already contains thousands or even millions of records. For example, if I want to sort this list by last name, the name field needs to be split into separate first and last name fields. That is easily done. Now I can sort by last name. It's just as easy to merge two adjacent fields. I'll combine the address and suite fields into a single field, separated by a comma. Of course, I can also insert new fields at any spot, delete fields that aren't needed anymore, or temporarily hide fields I don't want to see at the moment. All of these major operations are instantaneous for all but the largest databases, and they all support multi-level undo. Earlier I gave you a quick tour of Panorama's custom layout capabilities. Panorama can also set up common layout arrangements automatically without having to fiddle with each individual object. I'll add a custom layout, which we call a form, to this new database. I'll arrange the new window so that the data sheet is still visible, and I'll give the new form a name. To save time, I'll let Panorama automatically create an arrangement for editing the data. All I have to do is tell Panorama what fields to include and in what order, and it does the rest. I can use this arrangement as is, or I can use the graphical tools to modify it any way I want. With one click, the form switches from form layout mode to active data mode, and I can view and edit the data as needed. Any changes made to data on the form is automatically synced on the datasheet, and vice versa. It's easy to go back into layout mode and add a push button to this form. But why settle for a plain push button when I can use one of the almost 700 built-in Font Awesome icons as a button? Panorama includes a built-in wizard to help you select and customize an icon button. I can adjust the size and color, then create the button, and drag it into place. I add the code needed to make the button work, then switch to active data mode to try out the new button. You've just seen a tiny bit of Panorama's automation capabilities. Here at ProView, we're big believers in automation. If a task is going to be performed more than two or three times, automation is the best way to ensure that the task is performed rapidly and accurately. That's why every aspect of Panorama operation can be automated database manipulation, modifying database structure, even graphical layout tasks can be automated. Let's see how easy it is to create a simple program. I'll start by creating a new program, giving it a name, and then positioning the new window so that I can see both the code and my data at the same time. Panorama's programming language is easy to learn, but if you don't want to get into programming at all, you can still use the built-in recorder which will watch your actions and turn them into programming code automatically. The recorded code is automatically added to the action menu, where it can be played back at any time. It can also be attached to a button or set up to trigger when a specific event occurs. If you do have programming experience, you'll appreciate the rich set of tools available in Panorama's programming language, including conditional logic, subroutines, alerts and dialogues, full menu control, background timers, asynchronous internet access, and much, much more. You can even include code snippets written in popular languages like AppleScript, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, PHP, and more. Even better, you're sure to appreciate that all of this is very well documented in the integrated help system, and that Panorama's online community is active, friendly, and very helpful. 
Collecting and manipulating raw data is one thing, comprehension is another. To facilitate true comprehension, Panorama includes a special analysis tool that transforms your raw data into an easily digestible, interactive outline. You can quickly shift your vantage point in the outline, zooming out to grasp key overall trends or drilling down to focus in on important details and chase down loose ends that you might otherwise never have noticed. This checkbook database contains hundreds of checks. With so much detailed data, it's impossible to spot trends and outliers. I've already set up several favorite analyses for this database, so I'll choose the by month and category analysis. The raw data disappears and is replaced by monthly totals, giving me a quick feel for overall spending trends during the year. I can immediately see that spending was high in March and low in September. The first thing I notice, though, is that there appears to be some stray data. As I speak, it is 2017, but there is one data point in the middle of 2018. I didn't notice this when looking at the raw data, but now it sticks out like a sore thumb. I can right-click on this line to expand the summary and see the raw data behind this value. Aha! The month and day are correct, but the year is wrong. Easily fixed. Now I can rerun the analysis. Good. Everything seems to be in order now. I can expand any summary value to see additional detail. Here are the category breakdowns for July. I can keep expanding all the way to the raw data. The summary outline is totally interactive. I can zoom out to spot overall trends, then zoom in to investigate details. I can also adjust the overall vantage point. Summaries are usually arranged alphabetically or chronologically but they can also be sorted by value. This analysis ranks the categories by spending within each month, making it easy to spot trends and outliers. It's now obvious that payroll and purchases are consistent top spending items each month, while advertising jumps up and down. The underlying detail is always just a click or two away. Analysis doesn't have to be done by month or even have any date component at all. Here's an analysis that organizes spending by category and payee, regardless of date. When your analysis is complete, simply dismiss it to reveal and continue working with the original raw data. By now you've got a pretty good idea of Panorama's amazing power and ease of use, but there are dozens of additional features that we don't have time to go into. The beauty of Panorama is that it is very simple and easy to get started, but it doesn't run out of power as you gain more experience. With all this power, you may be surprised at how affordable Panorama 10 is. After your free trial, you can get started with Panorama 10 for as little as $15, and ongoing use is as little as $5 a month. For months when you don't use it, you pay nothing. There are no recurring payments. We don't keep your credit card on file, and you are in control at all times. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to RAM-based database management with Panorama 10. To explore further, download the free Panorama 10 trial and check it out for yourself.